Good morning. Can you believe that it's already day three of Vacation Bible School? Goes by so fast, doesn't it? Well, welcome back, ter Terrific Travelers. Who is on board for another adventure on the Rocky Railway? Remember, this week is about discovering that Jesus' power pulls us through, even when life gets a little tough. Yes, it gets off track, doesn't it? Well, let's start off singing our theme song, Your Power Will Pull Us Through. <laughs> to lead us we're on the right track oh, oh, oh. up and ready for on the, being on the railroad, I don't know what will. Hey, did you know that trains talk to each other? Well, they don't really talk, but they communicate. Hmm, okay. Well, listen to this and see if you can guess what this train might be saying. <laughs> No idea. Let's keep listening. Hmm. It's kind of like Morse code with dots and dashes. with long and short blasts. But it's really loud. Well, train whistles 
apostles are big and loud and bold because they have an important message to communicate. Did you know that God wants us to be bold like that too? Sometimes we have to stand up for what we believe about Jesus. We may have to say things that are not popular. We need to be bold. We need to tell other people about Jesus and about how he is the only way to be saved from our sins and to go to heaven. Being bold can be hard, but you're not in it alone. Our Bible point today is Jesus' power helps us to be bold. Isaiah 40, 29 tells us that he gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. So we can trust in him for our boldness. Let's celebrate that promise by singing Power Shuffle. in the air right now it's all around i see it everywhere it's the power yeah yeah god's power it's the power to move and it starts it's the power to heal your broken heart it's the power yeah god's power so don't hold back no don't hold still God is here and he is real Take four steps to the left, to the left One, two, three, four and Turn it around and move to the right One, two, three Now take tiny little jumps Four to the front One, two, three, four Four jumps back but you better look back One, two, three, four Now free and everybody clap your hands. Now stop. I feel it in the air right now. It's all around, I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, God's power. It's the power to move and it start. It's the power to heal your broken heart. It's the power. Yeah, God's power So don't hold back, no, don't hold still God is here and He is real Take four steps to the left, to the left One, two, three, four Turn it around and move to the right One, two, three Now take tiny little jumps, four to the front Back, but you better look back. Let's do it all again right now. Take four steps to the left, to the left. One, two, two the three, left. four. Turn it around and move to the right. One, two, two the right. three. Now take tiny little jumps. Four to the front. One, two, the front, two, to the three, front, to the four. Four jumps back, but you better look back. Everybody clap your hands. Now stop. Now you can move. <laughs> you know, we can use all of our senses to find evidence of God all around us. Just like we heard the train whistle, we can use our ears to hear evidence of God. For example, the songs that we're singing right now here at VBS. These songs, they speak of truth, of Jesus, of his power. And then even songs that you hear that you can sing all around to your friends. You can share these things. And we offer praise to him with these songs as well. And so that is great for him. He loves to hear you praising him. So that means that you can even be a God sighting, remember the bracelet, to others around you. 
You can sing to them. You can speak the truth to them. And you can give them hope through any hard time. Being bold and telling them about how much Jesus loves them. So much so that he took the punishment for our sins and died on the cross. He came back to life so that you and me, we can have life with him. And that is what he wants for you and your family and your friends. Let's sing Power in the Blood. job. Remember to be bold for Jesus. And you're going to get to learn more about how in your lesson with Mr. Long. See y'all tomorrow. Welcome to day three, everybody. We are glad that you're back with us. If you're just tuning in, this is your first time. A special welcome to you. We're glad that you are all here. This week, we've been discovering some amazing things about God's power, Jesus' power. Jesus helps us to do hard things. We found out with Ananias. Jesus' power gives us hope. We found out with the shipwreck and Paul here. And today, we'll find out that Jesus' power helps us be bold. You know, today's true story comes from the book of Acts. That's in the New Testament in the Bible. And to experience what happened, we're going to travel to the city of Jerusalem. Okay. Now, this story actually opens up with a man who couldn't walk. Now, I want you to picture in your mind for a minute if you had a friend who was not able to walk and you had to carry this friend to school every day. I said, carry this friend to school every day. And then after school, you would carry him back home. Everywhere he needed to go, you were the one who was to carry him. Or put it this way, what if you were the one who couldn't walk and you had to have somebody to carry you to school every day and after school carry you back home and any place else you wanted to go, you would have to be carried. Now you're sitting there thinking, well, what about a car or you know, something like that? Remember, in Bible times, they didn't have cars. They didn't even have wheelchairs. So if you could not walk, you had to depend on somebody else to move you, physically pick you up and move you. Otherwise, you'd stay in the same place for however long it took here. So anyway, on this particular day in Jerusalem, something really bold happened. You see, every day a man sat by the temple gate here. 
He couldn't walk. For 40 years, this man couldn't walk. Can you imagine? And you know, most of you that are watching, kids, you're 12, you're 7, something. 40 years he couldn't walk, and he remained there. He couldn't even stand up and take a step. If he wanted to go anywhere, he had to depend on somebody to move him. All this man could do was sit there at the temple gate with his hands held open like this in hope that somebody would be kind enough to maybe drop a few coins, you know, as he sat there begging. Most of the time, people would just walk right past him, not even acknowledge that he was there. It must have been a very difficult life for this man. Well, one day, two Christians named Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and so they were going to pass through the temple gate. On their way, they saw the man, and they stopped in front of him. They had something for him, and it was better than what he expected. Peter went right boldly to that man and said, I don't have any gold or silver, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Now, think here. How would you compare gold and silver to what Peter was offering this man? So what do you think when Peter boldly told this man to get up that Jesus was going to heal him? He jumped right up and he started praising God. Can you imagine the scene? Hallelujah! He's just crying. Look, I can walk. Everybody, I can walk. And he's just praising God and everything. And, you know, this miracle started no small commotion and people started gathering and soon there was a huge cow gathered around the temple gate. They said, what's going on? What's going on? And then, incredibly, another bold thing happened. Peter and John stood up and they started telling the crowd about Jesus. They told the crowd who Jesus was and that he had been crucified and that he had died for their sins and, and they needed him. Well, that made some people in the crowd pretty upset because, you see, not everybody was a fan of Jesus, especially a bunch of the religious leaders who were there at the time. They thought that Jesus was just a liar, and anybody who followed Jesus had to be liars also. Now that makes me wonder for a minute. When is it hard for you to tell somebody about Jesus? Well, the leaders in that crowd, they got so angry and so upset with Peter and John, that they had them arrested and thrown in jail, and they commanded them, do not talk about Jesus anymore. Well, Peter and John had to make a decision. They could either decide to not talk about Jesus anymore and be safe, or they could continue talking about Jesus and face a lot of trouble. So guess what they did? Peter and John boldly told the leaders, we can't obey you instead of Jesus. We're not going to stop talking about Jesus. Now that's bold. I mean, you got these re big religious leaders here and they're telling them, no, we're not going to obey you. That was bold. They stood up. They made a stand here. Their boldness was so big. The Bible says that that day, 5,000 men believed. Now, that's not even counting the women and children who were undoubtedly there. Now, that got me to thinking. I know Jesus because someone boldly told me about Jesus. If you were tuned in three days ago, I told you about a friend, Todd, who led me to Christ. And it was that friend who boldly told me about Jesus. Has somebody boldly told you about Jesus? And if so, who could you tell? You know, Jesus' power made somebody bold enough so that I could hear about Jesus. And Jesus' power can help you be bold also.
Now let's go back to Peter and John here. That ang the angry leaders that had them arrested, again, they were threatening them. They were commanding, do not say anything more about this Jesus. And then they let him go. And Peter and John went over to their friends and told them everything that had happened. And then they prayed together and they asked God for courage. I know we all need courage. You need courage to do certain things. I need courage to do certain things. And when it comes to being bold in what we believe, we need courage. But you're not alone. There's friends all around you. And God himself knows what you need boldness in. So let's pause for a moment and pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for always being with us. Thank you that we are never alone. And when we feel like we are the only ones who believe you, when we feel like we're the only ones facing tough stuff, you're right there beside us. Give us strength and love and boldness. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Remember, in those hard times, Jesus can give you the boldness to do what you need to do. Thank you for listening and we will see you tomorrow for another incredibly true Bible story. Hello, boys and girls. It's so good to have you back again today. And uh, I remember back last summer and the other summers when we were able to have Vacation Bible School right here at church, I would always ask you the question, how many of you have been here every day this week? And boys and girls all across the auditorium would raise their hand. Well, I can't have you raise your hand. I can't see it, but uh, I do wonder how many of you have been here every day this week. I hope that you can... can uh, be online with us every day, Monday through Friday, for the Vacation Bible School this year. I sure wish that we could have it right here because I miss seeing all you boys and girls, but we live in a day with the coronavirus. And, but I'm glad that we can do this online, and I hope that you're getting a lot out of it. But anyway, here in just a few minutes, uh, uh, my wife Karen is going to come, and she's going to share with you how she came to know Christ as her Savior and let me tell you what that means when you know Christ as your Savior that means that God just forgives all of your sins he records your name in the book of life and he reserves for you a home in heaven and that is really really good news and when I get to heaven I want to see all of you boys and girls there and I sure hope that if you have not already trusted in Christ as your Savior that you will do that today I always make this statement, and perhaps you remember it, and that is that heaven is for real, and you don't want to miss it. And so now let's have Miss Karen come, and she's going to share with you how she came to know Christ as her Savior and how you can do the same thing. So, Miss Karen, why don't you come at this time? Hi, boys and girls. My name is Miss Karen, and I want to start out by asking you a couple questions, if I could. Um, the first one is, how many of you have brothers and sisters? I'm sure most of you probably will raise your hand. Uh, how many of you are only children? In other words, you don't have any brothers or sisters. That's me. I don't have any brothers or sisters. And I'm about to tell you why. Do you want to know why I don't have any brothers or sisters? I'm not really proud of what I'm about to say. Uh, in fact, I'm not, but it's true. And the reason I don't have any brothers or sisters is because I was a really difficult child. And after my parents had me, it's like they didn't want another child like me because I was so difficult. Uh, it, it was just... Yeah, I guess it started out from birth. I don't remember any of that, obviously. But as I got older, I still remember uh, how um, I was just really rebellious. I just didn't want to do what I was told to do. I was so strong-willed. And I had this mentality, and I knew exactly what I was doing, that if my parents told me to do something, or really anybody in authority, I guess, but especially my parents, if they told me to do something, then I didn't want to do it. And if they told me to do something, uh, then I wouldn't do what they told me to do. And so it's just kind of this whole lifestyle, strong-willed kid thing, and I just didn't want to obey. And I was also a really lonely kid. Uh, 
uh, there wasn't a lot of kids in my neighborhood. Um, even the few that were there, a lot of times I was so bossy, they didn't want to have me as their friend. I mean, it just went on and on. And uh, as I approached my teen years, I became really s more and more sad, very lonely, and really, really depressed. In fact, it got so bad uh, in my teen years that I really wondered sometimes, do I really want to keep living? I mean, I just kind of didn't see the purpose for being around and was really thinking some very dark thoughts, you know, about not being around and even taking my own life. But when I was about 14 years old, a number of things started happening that totally changed my life. One was, uh, in high school, I started um, meeting some, some uh, really committed Christian friends, or Christian people, and they became my friends, and they started telling me about uh, how they have this personal relationship with Jesus Christ, and how he was their like their best friend and this real intimate, loving relationship with the God of the universe. And I'm thinking, can you really have that? I mean, I just didn't know you could have that kind of relationship with God, someone that really loved you completely, unconditionally. I, I didn't get it, but it really intrigued me, and I really wanted to know more and more about that. And then kind of a whole another set of circumstances, but I ended up with this book by a man named Billy Graham, and he's a real famous preacher, he's passed away now, but anyway, he wrote this book, and it's called Peace with God, and I started reading it, because I thought that was an interesting title, and so I started reading it, and he kept referring in the Bible uh, to, well, in fact, the first chapter is called The Quest, quest. It's a journey, that we're all on this spiritual journey. And he started referring over and over again to the Bible as the Word of God. And he said that how the Bible said that we can have meaning and purpose and fulfillment in our life if we put our faith and trust in Christ. And he also said that if we come to the place of realizing that we're a sinner, and I really realized I was a sinner, uh, that we could have the assurance of knowing that when we died, we'd go to heaven. And I thought, wow, I really would like that because I didn't know for sure I was going to heaven. In fact, I, I really hadn't thought a whole lot about hell, but I started thinking a whole lot about it at the time because he kept referring how Christ mentioned about hell because he didn't want us to go there from the Bible. And I thought, boy, I don't want to go there either. So anyway, the thought of knowing for sure that I could go to heaven when I died, I just really wanted to know that. So anyway, I kept on, read the book, finished it, and then it wasn't, I, I didn't make any decision, nothing really like clicked, the, the dots hadn't connected yet, but then shortly after that, I was by myself, my fo folks were gone somewhere, I don't know where they were, and um, I'm 14 years old, and I'm watching TV, and all of a sudden, this guy, Billy Graham, comes on TV, and I thought, I just read a book about him. I mean, I didn't really understand, you know, how famous this guy was because here he is on TV. And then he kept saying, the Bible says, the Bible says. And I thought, I, I need to listen to this. And so I was just totally glued in. And when he started talking about how Jesus Christ, perfect God, who took on the form of man, came, and when he died, he took all of my sin that, I should have been on that cross, but instead he died in my place. If I will put my faith and trust in him at a point in time, repent of my sin, and say, Lord Jesus, I will trust you, I will follow you, that with that I can go to heaven. And I thought, I want to do that. I mean, I want to do that like right now. And so I did. I, I, at that point, again, just in the quietness of my own heart, no one else was around, and I just said, Lord, please forgive me of my sin. I want to put my faith and trust in you. Come into my life, and I will follow you. And I will just say this. Um, it was the best decision I ever made. I, I just can't. Everything changed. I mean, listen, some things took a little while, but that rebellion and time it just started getting, you know, going away, and I go to my parents, and I deeply apologize, and we got things right with each other, and because of my issues that I had, and I will also say this, um, a few other things that happened I want to encourage you with. One is, I had a passion to see my friends come to know Christ, but I had a problem. I didn't know the Bible well at all. In fact, I only knew one Bible verse, and it's John 3.16, and some of you guys know uh, John 3.16, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, and I started sharing that with my friends, and they said, oh, you can't know for sure you're going to heaven. No, the Bible says, and I'd quote that verse, and my friends, a number of them, came to Christ, and even now, like, 
50 some years later, they're still walking with God, you know, because it wasn't me, it was the power of God's word. And that was the other thing, is I started reading the Bible. And the Bible, all of a sudden, before I couldn't understand it, it was just all these weird words and I didn't get it, all of a sudden started coming alive. And, and if you've never read the Bible before, let me encourage you to start reading in the book of John. You know, there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Start reading in the book of John and pray and ask God to help you to understand his word. Because this is the power, this is the love letter, this is the roadmap, if you will, for our lives as, as believers in Christ. And then lastly, the other thing that helped me to really make a difference in my life is I got into a good Bible teaching church. And... Um, you know, find us, yourself a good church wherever you may be and start attending as you can. You know, we're doing the, you know, distancing thing and all like that, but as you can, obviously get into a good church and be faithful because that's your church family. That's how you will, will really grow in your walk with the Lord. So anyway, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you what God has done in my life. And again, if you've not made that decision, let me encourage you to accept the Lord Jesus. This could be your day. So thank you again. Bye. <clears throat> well, thank you, Miss Karen. I sure do appreciate that testimony and that story of how you came to know Christ as your Savior. And boys and girls, I hope you do the same thing. I'm gonna, I want to tell you a story. Um, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is a medicine bottle. And a few years ago, I got really sick. I was having trouble breathing, and I was coughing a lot. And as best I remember, I had a high fever and uh, just felt really yucky all over. So I went to my doctor, and he looked me over, and he said, John, you have bronchitis. Now, that is a problem in the lungs and in the airways to the lungs. And so he wrote me out a prescription for some medicine, and I went to the pharmacist and gave them the prescription. They filled it and put the medicine in this bottle and gave it to me, and I paid for the medicine, and I came home. Now, boys and girls, when I came home, I had a decision to make. You see this bottle of medicine right here? I had a bottle like that that had all the medicine in it that my doctor told me to take, and I had a decision to make, and that is, am I going to take the medicine or not? Now, you know, my doctor is a really, really fine doctor, and I knew that, that uh, if he said that this medicine would get, help me get well, that I could trust that because he was just a really good doctor. He knew what he was doing. And so since I trusted my doctor, I started taking this medicine exactly like he told me to do. And I think I had to take it twice a day or something like that. And you know what happened when I took that medicine? Well, I, lo and behold, I got well. I got over my sickness. The medicine cured my bronchitis. But, you know, you know boys and girls, if I had chosen not to take the medicine... That bronchitis, chances are it would have developed into pneumonia. And uh, pneumonia is a little bit more serious than just bronchitis. In fact, uh, people can die of pneumonia. But uh, I trusted my doctor. I took the medicine that he told me to take, and I got well. Well, you know what, boys and girls? You and I and everybody else that we know, my wife, uh, my friends, everybody in this whole world, we are all spiritually sick. And the reason we are spiritually sick is because of that word sin, S-I-N. I think you know what sin is. Sin is when we do things that are wrong. Uh, lying and stealing and cheating and saying dirty words and disobeying your mom or dad. Uh, all those things are, those are that's, that's what the Bible calls sin. And uh, that is a sickness that we all have. But the good news is that God provided a way. It's not a prescription in a bottle like this, but God provided a way so that that sickness could be cured. And, and what he did was he sent his eternal son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come down to earth and to be born of the Virgin Mary. And Jesus, the, the eternal son of God, became a man. And uh, as the God-man, the Son of God and, and man in one person, Christ lived a perfect life without sin. He never, ever did anything wrong. He never told a lie. He never stole anything, never said any dirty words because he was not just man, but he was also God in one person. And uh, the, the Old Testament, which was written a long time ago in the Bible, it, it told that Jesus 
would uh, come and that men would nail him to the cross and that he would die on that cross for us. And uh, that's exactly what happened. You see this cross right here? It's a cross like that, probably a whole lot bigger than this one. But evil men took the Lord Jesus and they nailed his hands to the cross and they, they nailed his feet to the cross. And when the Lord Jesus was on the cross, God the Father took all of our sin and put that sin on Jesus and he died in our place. Now you know what, I left my Bible over here. I want to get it real quick. Um, I want to share a verse with you from the Bible that talks about what Jesus did for you and for me. Because you see that when he died on the cross, that is a picture of his love for us. In the New Testament book of Romans, chapter 5 and verse 8. Oh, wait a second. Uh, here he is. Okay. It says, for, for God demonstrates... Okay, here we are, verse 10. I was having trouble finding it. It says, For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and boys and girls, because... Because the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty of our sins, and then he was buried, and three days later he rose from the dead, just like he promised, then what that did, that paid the penalty for our sin. Jesus took our punishment for us. We, we often say that Jesus took our spanking, if you know what I mean. And now because he paid the penalty for our sin, paid the punishment for our sin, because of that, heaven for you and for me is a free gift. Now, I showed this to you last time, but I'm sure you've all had uh, birthdays or Christmases, and uh, your parents get you a, a, a birthday present or a Christmas present. I'm having a little bit of a problem with my microphone. There we go. Uh, so just imagine that you wake up on the day of your birthday, and your mom and dad bought you a birthday present. They had it all wrapped up real nice like, and they gave you this present for your birthday. You know what? That present does not become yours until you reach out and receive that gift and, and take that gift as a present that your mom and dad gave for you. And you know, boys and girls, the same is true about heaven and the forgiveness of sin. The Bible says, but as many as receive Christ, that's like receiving the free gift, but as many as receive Christ to them, God gave the right to be called the children of God. And if you're God's child, you belong in God's home, and God's home is in heaven. And I remember uh, back when I was in high school, I started going to a church with a friend, and I heard the pastor share this same message. And uh, he shared how if I wanted God to forgive my sins and reserve a place for me in heaven, that I needed to accept the Lord Jesus as my Savior. I needed to receive him and receive that free gift. And uh, I didn't know how to do that, but he said, well, you do that by simply calling upon his name, by praying to God. Uh, when we talk to each other, we just call that conversation. But when we talk to God, we call that prayer. Well, to be honest with you, I really didn't know how to pray. I, I didn't, I, I just didn't know how to. And so this man that was talking to me there, a good man there at the church, he, uh, he said, well, John, I will lead you in prayer. And uh, I will just pray a simple prayer, and you can pray that right along with me. And as long as you believe that in your heart and you're sincere to God, then that prayer becomes your prayer. And I said, well, that sounds good to me. And so he said, well, John, let's pray. Why don't you just pray right after me? And he would pray short little phrases and pause and give me a chance to pray that. And right there, when I was 16 years old, I prayed and I asked the Lord Jesus to be my Savior. I received that free gift of the forgiveness of sin and eternal life in heaven. And you can do the same thing as well. And if you would like to receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior 
and the free gift of eternal life, then why don't you right now just pray along with me. You can bow your heads right there where you are and, and just pray. You can pray it silently or you can pray it out loud. God will hear it either way because God can hear everything. He knows our thoughts. He hears our words. Uh, so you can, like I said, you can pray it silently or you can pray it out loud. But why don't you join me right now in this prayer? Just start out by just telling God that you know that you're a sinner and that you've done things that are wrong. Uh, and pray a prayer just like this. God in heaven, I, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I've done things that are wrong. But I believe the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven and died on the cross for me. And I believe that when Jesus died on that cross, you put all of my sin on him. And he died in my place. He took my punishment for me and then I I believe that after he died I believe they put him in a tomb but three days later I believe the Lord Jesus rose from the dead and is alive today and now why don't you just thank the Lord Jesus that he did die for you and ask him to come into your heart a little simple prayer like this Lord Jesus I thank you that you died on the cross for me I thank you that you paid the penalty for my sin and that you rose again from the dead. And Lord Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior and forgive me of all my sin. I sure hope that uh, all of you boys and girls, if you had not already prayed that prayer before, that you prayed that prayer uh, this morning and received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Remember, heaven is for real, and you don't want to miss it. And if you accept Christ as your Savior, you won't miss it. Because the Bible says, as many as receive Christ, to them God gave the right to become the children of God. And remember, if you're God's child, you belong in God's home, and God's home is heaven. Now, boys and girls, I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow at 9 o'clock. We're going to have a really great time tomorrow, and if you... Uh, know some friends that have not been tuning in to, to this Vacation Bible School online, then you might want to invite them and tell them how to do this, and that way they can join us tomorrow. So listen, have a great day. Be safe, stay healthy, and uh, we look forward to being back together again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Bye now.